Dear learners, welcome to the National Institute of Open Schooling. Today I am going to talk about Kingdom Protoctista and Kingdom Fungi. Now I will talk about Kingdom Protoctista. I mentioned earlier that Kingdom Protoctista is also known as Protista and just like Monerans, they too are unicellular organisms. If they are unicellular organisms, then why are they not placed under monorans? Yes, they are not placed under monorans because they are eukaryotic cell. Eukaryotic means they contain the cell organelles and a well-defined nucleus in the cytoplasm. That is, they have membrane-bound organelles, mitochondria, lysosomes, Golgi apparatus, etc. They have a protoplasmic grade of organization. And just like monorans, these are also microscopic. They cannot be seen with a naked eye. Locomotion in these protoctistans is either by flagella or cilia or pseudopodia. And reproduction is either asexual or sexual. Just like the monorans, they too have a diversified nutritional mode. They can either be autotrophic or saprophytic or parasitic or they can be, they can feed on other organisms. Kingdom Protista includes six phylum, phylum protozoa, phylum basiliophyta, which includes all the diatoms, phylum phaeophyta, which includes the brown algae, phylum chlorophyta, which includes chlorella, phylum rhodophyta, which includes red algae, phylum umycota, which includes phytophthora. Phylum protozoa is divided into four classes. Class rhizopoda. Rhizopoda include all those organisms which move about with the help of pseudopodia. Example is amoeba. Class flagellata. As the name suggests, flagella means whip-like. So this class includes all the organisms which move about with the help of flagella. Example is euglida. Phylum protozoa also includes class ciliata. Ciliata, as the name suggests, moves about with the help of cilia. So, for example, paramecium. One of the examples that we are all aware of is plasmodium. And since they live in the body of the host and do not move about, they are grouped under group sporozoa. Here in the diagram, you can see three beautiful protozoans, amoeba, paramecium and flagella. And what difference do you see in all these three diagrams? You see that in the first one, that is amoeba, it is irregular in shape. And you can see the flowing extensions of the cytoplasm, which is nothing else but pseudopodia. So it belongs to the class rhizopoda and moves about with the help of pseudopodia. Pseudopodia also helps this animal in capturing the prey and forming a food vacuole where food is finally digested and given out into the cytoplasm and to carry on the various activities of life. The excretion in them is not required because they live in water, but they do have a osmoregulatory mechanism which is carried out by the contractile vacuole. Euglena has got a whip-like flagella, the flagella that you saw in the case of the monorans. But there is a tremendous difference between the structure of the monorans and the eukaryotic flagella. So both of them have flagella for movement, but the structure is different in both. Euglena are autotrophs and can manufacture their own food. And as you can see in the diagram, they contain chloroplasts, which contains chlorophyll, which is required for the synthesis of their own food in the presence of sunlight. They have got a certain mouth, unlike the amoeba, where 
the food is taken up by forming a food vacuole with the help of pseudopodia. Here you find there is a mouth or a cytostome which leads into a gullet and then the food is pinched off into the body as food vacuole. Paramecium where the whole body is covered by cilia. So, the movement here is brought about by these cilia. Also, the difference between amoeba, euglena and paramecium is that paramecium contains two nuclei. One is the micronucleus and other is the macronucleus. The micronucleus is reproductive in nature whereas macronucleus is vegetative. Chlamydomonas has got flagella and it can also move about with the help of this flagella as you can see in the case of euglena that the nutrition in them is diversified as you find in the case of monorids and we have already talked about the different modes of nutrition. They can either be parasitic as I have said that the parasitic ones will live inside the body of the host for example is trypanosoma leishmania and can cause diseases. Lispania causes Kalazar where the strepanosoma causes sleeping sickness in human beings. They can be autotrophs, for example, euglena, which can manufacture its own food with the help of chlorophyll. They can be saprophytic or they can be heterotrophs. Just like in the case of monorins, here also you will find that reproduction is either sexual or asexual. Asexual reproduction takes place by binary fission. So, it is the nucleus which is first dividing followed by the cytoplasm. A constriction appears in the middle which deepens. That is a furrow appears in the middle as you can see in the diagram which further deepens and ultimately the two amoebae are formed. Sexual reproduction is also found in some of the protistas. For example, you find sexual reproduction in paramecium which is by conjugation. In case of paramecium, you will find that two paramecia, they come close together and a protoplasmic bridge is formed between the two as you can see in the diagram. Exchange of genetic material takes place through this protoplasmic bridge. Remember exchange that is from one paramecia genetic material would move to the other. It is not one going into the other, it is both ways. And further meiotic division etc takes place. So, here you find that although sexual reproduction is taking place, it is different from the higher forms in that the two whole individuals are involved in reproduction. I would now talk about fungi. As I have already said that some of them may be macroscopic. Can you think of any macroscopic fungi? I am sure some of you must have. It is the mushroom. Why? Because some of us must be eating the mushrooms. But all mushrooms are not edible. Some of them are poisonous also. So, we should be careful of what mushroom we are taking. So, these mushrooms are macroscopic. Otherwise, the majority of the fungi are microscopic. They are filamentous in nature and are made up of hyphae. Except for yeast, which is oval in shape or round in shape, we can say. These hyphae are fine branching and they are usually colorless threads. Now, when these hyphae are joined together, or they form a cluster then they are known as mycelium. Now, these mycelium if they are in cluster then why is it that we are not able to see them? Next time when you go to the market or when your mother brings mushroom or those who do not eat the mushroom can go to the market pick up one mushroom. The moment you turn the mushroom you will be able to see these hyphae or you will be able to see these mycelium and therefore because these hyphae are small in size, we are not able to see them. These hyphae are found hidden in food, they are hidden in soil, they are hidden in rotting wood. So, what do we conclude from this? 
you conclude that they are found everywhere. So you can find they are diversified in their habit, you can find them in all the niches. The nutrition in hyphae is only by absorption. They can absorb the glucose very easily and they are saprophytic. They feed on the dead decaying organic matter. As you can see here, there is something coming out of the body of the fungi. What is this? These are enzymes. So these enzymes are known as zymase. Now these zymase, they break down the complex sugar like sucrose which can be not be taken up by these small organisms. So sucrose is broken down into glucose and then the glucose is absorbed into the body. In other words, the food is absorbed by these fungi. Some of the fungi are also parasitic and can cause diseases. Yeast is a very good example of saprophytic fungi which can absorb glucose. Reproduction in them is both asexual as well as sexual. Asexual reproduction is by budding, fission and spore formation. Now there is no uniqueness in the budding method of reproduction in fungi. A bud appears, grows in size, constriction appears and it detaches itself from the mother cells and leads an independent existence. This is what is uh, by budding. A constriction appears or a break in the body appears and the two separates from each other. Not all the fungi are useful. There are harmful fungi as well. They cause diseases. To name a few, athlete's foot, ringworm disease. You find this ringworm disease which is very common during the rainy season or due to the hot summer months, you also find that these fungi can cause harm to the plants that for example, it causes red rust disease in wheat, which is patches on the leaves and the stem of the wheat crop as a result of which the yield of wheat is reduced and if this wheat which has been contaminated by the fungi is eaten, it can cause cancer even in human being. Today we have talked about the kingdom Monera, Protoctista and Fungi and I hope the three kingdoms are crystal clear to you people and you can now identify the various animals that can be grouped into the three kingdoms. Thank you. Dear learners, welcome to the National Institute of Open Schooling. Today I am going to talk about Kingdom Monera. But before I start with this, let us recall about these kingdom. You have already learned in the previous lessons that it was Whitaker in 1969 who classified the various organisms into five kingdoms. Kingdom Monera, Kingdom Protectista or Protista, Kingdom Fungi, Kingdom Plantae, and Kingdom Animalia. And he did this because there are diversified organisms which are found on this beautiful planet Earth. So, to, in order to differentiate each one of them, he grouped them into certain groups depending upon their similarities and differences. The monerans were the first organisms that came on this earth. These are prokaryotic unicellular organisms, whereas all others are eukaryotic. Protoctistin or protista, they are unicellular, but 
they are eukaryotic, that is, the cell organelles are defined and are enclosed by a membrane. Plantae, animalia and fungi, on the other hand, are all multicellular organisms. They are eukaryotes. Initially, the fungi was placed along with the plantae, but because they are not differentiated into the three distinct regions, root, stem and the plant body, that is there is no differentiation of the plant body, therefore they were grouped separately into kingdom fungi. The plantae as you all know can manufacture their own food. Animals are heterotroph, so Whitaker grouped these into five kingdoms. Later it was also found that since these Prokaryotic bacterians were the first one to exist on this earth. They were known as Archaebacteria and they included two groups. One was Archaebacteria and the other was Eubacteria. Now the Archaebacteria are the true bacteria. Archaebacteria are the primitive ones that can survive under extreme conditions of the environment. Now Archaebacteria, these include all the bacteria they, that occur under harsh conditions. For example, methogenic bacteria, they live in the sewage. In fact, these are the ones which are used for the sewage treatment. They are also found in the intestinal tract of cows. Thermoacidophilic bacteria live in hot springs. On the contrary, halophilic bacteria, they live in the salty lakes and rivers. Let us see the various eubacteria. As you can see here, they are of different colors, shapes, etc. So these eubacteria, they include all the microscopic organisms. They are prokaryotes. Prokaryotes that the cell organelles in them like mitochondria, Golgi apparatus, endoplasmic reticulum, etc. are absent in them and they do not have a well-defined nucleus. They include the bacteria and blue-green algae. The blue-green algae are now known as cyanobacteria. They are all unicellular organisms that they are single cell organisms. So the moment we say prokaryotic unicellular organism, Immediately it should come to your mind that we are talking about the bacteria, the cyanobacteria, that is we are talking about the kingdom Monera. We are talking about the eubacteria. Let us now study about the various parts of this unicellular organism. They consist of an outer wall as you can see in the diagram and this is known as the cell wall. The cell wall in them is made up of peptidoglycan. Now this peptidoglycan is unique to the bacteria only and is not found in the plants which also have a cell wall but it is not made up of peptidoglycan. Below the cell wall lies the cell membrane or the plasma membrane. The cell wall protects the cell and also gives its shape. In some bacteria, as you can see in the diagram, it is surrounded by yet another layer which is known as the capsule, but that is only in some of the bacteria. From the cell wall, certain thread-like structures that you see in the diagram, they are emerging out. These are known as pili and these play an important role in joining the two bacteria during reproduction. The cell membrane encloses the cytoplasm and the other structures which are present. Well-defined nucleus with a nuclear membrane is absent in them. Therefore, this DNA lies in the cytoplasm and is not enclosed by any membrane. Now, the region where this is present is known as the nucleoid. This plasmid also 
reproduces along with the DNA, the other DNA, but it contains genes for antibiotic resistance and other sex factors and therefore is beneficial for the bacteria where it is present. You can see here in the diagram that a long thread like structure is present which is much thicker than the pili that I have just told you. This is known as flagella. These flagella make the bacteria move about freely. The cell organelles are absent in these prokaryotic organisms except that they contain ribosomes which are required for protein synthesis. Dear learners, now you can do a little activity which will make you confident and will make you realize that you have understood the concept of a prokaryotic organism. You can take a thermocol or you can take a cardboard and with the help of plasticine you can make a bacterial cell. You can use the various threads of different colors and thickness to show the pili and the flagella. So if the mitochondria is absent in them, then how does the cellular respiration takes place in these prokaryotic organisms? Now this cellular respiration takes place in certain organelles which are known as mesosomes. You can see these mesosomes here in the figure as internal extensions of the plasma membrane. So the cellular respiration takes place in these mesosomes in the absence of the mitochondria. The respiration otherwise is both anaerobic as well as aerobic. Reproduction too in these monorants are both by asexual method as well as sexual method. As you can see in the figure, the asexual method of reproduction takes place by binary fission. The DNA as you can see here replicates first and as the DNA is replicating, the bacteria cell starts growing and enlarges in size. And once the DNA replication is complete, the two DNA moves to the two op opposite poles of the bacterial cell. A constriction as you can see in the diagram appears in the middle and deepens and finally it results in the formation of two bacterial cells which separate from each other. Each one is a daughter bacterial cell which has its own DNA and it is capable of independent existence. Sexual reproduction also takes place in bacteria. As you can see here, there are two bacteria. One of them is known as F plus bacteria and the other one is known as F minus bacteria. The F plus bacteria contains a F factor which is responsible for the sexual reproduction and this is the one which will give the DNA to the other bacteria which is the F minus bacteria. The donor bacteria carries a DNA sequence called the fertility factor or the F factor. Typically the genetic material is in the form of a plasmid or a smaller piece of DNA. The F factor in the cell allows this bacteria to produce a pili. As you can see in this figure, the pili which is given out from the bacteria that contains the F factor would form a protoplasmic bridge between the two bacteria. Plasmid is nicked and a single strand of DNA is transferred to the recipient bacteria, the bacteria that did not contain the F factor. Both cells then synthesize a complementary strand to produce a double stranded circular plasmid. Both the bacterial cells are viable donors now. The genetic material transferred during conjugation provides some genetic advantage to the recipient antibiotic resistant genes, sex factors etc and therefore is more advantageous than the one which is devoid of it. You can list out the differences between the asexual and sexual mode of reproduction on a chart paper or you could also make the 
various steps of the asexual and sexual mode of reproduction with the help of plasticine as you have done earlier on. Do you know how curd is said? Well, you would say that a small amount of curd is added to the milk, warm milk that is, and then left aside for a couple of hours depending upon the temperature and the curd is said. But what is the scientific basis of it? It's basically the lactobacillus which is present, which at a particular temperature converts the milk into curd. So you see the advantage of this bacteria. At some point or the other, we all have taken antibiotics as prescribed by the doctor because when we are not well, the doctor prescribes us antibiotic depending upon the disease. And do you know that many of these antibiotics are obtained from these bacteria? You are all aware of penicillin which was the first one to be discovered which was obtained from a bacteria Penicillium notatum. We should not forget that many of them are harmful also and can cause various diseases that are typhoid, you know that it is caused by typhi bacteria, cholera by vibro cholerae, tetanus, diphtheria, tuberculosis, these are all caused by the various bacteria. You can do yet another activity and for this you can take help of your mother. You can make a chart of the various diseases caused by bacteria, remember only by bacteria. The causative agent of this disease, the preventive measures and the control. Now this will help you out to keep these bacteria away so that you are free from all the diseases. I hope by now you must have understood the basic concepts of Kingdom Monera in details about the various systems you will be doing later on. प्रकाशित करने राहों को आलोकित करने हम अपना दीपक स्वयं बने हम अपना रास्ता स्वयं चुने पढ़े हम कहीं पढ़े वे विषय के लोच से 